Okay. Uh, let's see. One zero one zero zero one. Oh, geez, it's such a bother. Why can't I do it easier and quicker? Hmm. What's this? One zero one zero zero one. Hmm. Twenty nine hex. Let's see how I made this little guy. A word from this video sponsor. Got an idea for a circuit, widget, or device that you want a rapid prototype or sell? Check out JLC PCB. They offer their board manufacturing services starting at two bucks for five boards and only take a few days from start to finish. So make sure to check out JLC PCB. And once again, thanks for making this video possible. Now let's get on with the video.
Okay, before I finish um, soldering the last few components, here I want to show you the actual prototype for the device that I made. And I'm going to have to set this down and turn it on. You can see it works. And with the keyboard which I built, which just is a messy kind of point-to-point -point wiring of the matrix with all the diodes on the back there. But yeah, everything works. So what I'm going to do is borrow the battery uh, holder as well as the OLED screen and solder it onto this board. So, Okay, so here we are. Everything's all completed. This was the prototype board. You can see just... You know, getting things done quickly, I have just kind of my general uh, ATmega 328P, a little tiny dev board, and it has minimum components necessary just to, to run a demo. I made this little proto board just for the, the button matrix to test out my idea before actually committing it to circuitry. And yeah, everything worked just fine on here. And as you can see, turn this on, here's a little tiny speaker on the side there. Not too loud, but then again, I wouldn't want it to be annoying. And yeah, you can see, you can type in numbers. The up down keys actually go through whether you want to modify the hex value, the binary, or the decimal. And you can just type in whatever you want. There we go and it'll update it in real time as you're typing it. So if I type 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, then ta-da, it's all zeros. <laughs> and if you type a key that is not valid, for instance, I can type 1 and 0, but if I try to type anything else, it won't. Um, and in order to make it easier to type, it advances to the next digit as you're typing. So you can just type a string out and it'll auto convert it for you. And so yeah, and the kind of hard to see there, but the the numbers for each of the keys and what the functions are, are actually I, I use the um, the stop layer so that they're basically the tinned metal and minus the solder mask. So it actually in real life, it's actually pretty high contrast. Uh, you got to get it you know, at the right angle on camera for it to show. And as for the power functionality, I'm using um, the low power mode on this ATmega 328P and no oscillator, so it's running off, no external oscillator. It's running off the internal 8 megahertz one, so it has minimal power draw. And by my calculations, I think it should last like a year or two on the same battery, just in standby mode like this while it's off. And the way to wake it is you have to hit the power button and it does remember where you left off. All the converted values are memorized. And there you go. I'm probably going to design like a little 3D printed case uh, with a hole so you can still access the, the button cell so you can replace it. One thing I kind of did an oopsie on. Um, I, met, I forgot two extra wires that I needed. Um, I was going to place vias on them and I never did and and I'm guessing I didn't run a, a final check of the board before placing the order. I was kind of in a rush. I really was excited. I wanted to get a board. Um, so I did not double check my work. And so I had to run two tiny little traces. The 8 and the A button would not work without it. So that's sort of a pain. Another thing that I kind of screwed up on is the footprint for the buttons. I accidentally ordered the wrong buttons actually. These are just slightly too large and I could just about bodge it. And so all the buttons work, they're all solidly on there. Uh, but if you are going to do this, get the correct size buttons because, you know, this was a pain to solder. What are these? Um, 16, 21 buttons uh, soldering, kind of bodging it on pads that are just barely too large for them. It, it was kind of a nightmare to be honest. Everything else was fine. I kind of went, er, I erred on the side of caution for the uh, diodes. So the pads are like massive for them. These are uh, MELF packages. And so I probably could have, I mean, I guess the, the best thing is this will be compatible with many different pa package size diodes. 
so it's not that critical and it's on the back side so that's fine i added an extra little switch so you can manually turn off if you know you're going to store this for a long time you don't want to remove the battery you can manually disconnect the battery and it, it won't consume any extra current uh, from the device itself i added like a little key ring thing i don't know why <laughs> This isn't something you would put on a key ring, just all exposed circuit board and whatnot. But other than that, uh, we have beautiful OLED screen here. And I've been meaning to use one of these displays on something. I had this in my parts drawer for the longest time. And actually, let's uh, peel off the ritual um, tape, the protective tape peeling has been done. And there we go. Beautiful. This is a 128 by um, 32 screen, and it was just enough to fit um, the B and then 16 uh, binary digits with a space in between so that you can easily tell which nibble is which. So here I can see this is actually the second digit there in hex. It just makes it more readable. If I put them all right next to each other, it would have worked just fine, but it'd be a little more annoying. You'd have to count uh, to find out what bit you're on. But yeah, everything works. I'm calling this the HBD converter version 1.0. There will have to be a version 2.0 because of the bodge wires that I have to uh, fix in on the board layout. But yeah, HBD for hex binary decimal converter. And there you go. And I'm probably going to 3D uh, print a little case for this that I don't care if the top side's um, exposed, but I don't want anything shorting on the back. So I'll, ex I'll print a case that this screws into with each of the mounting holes and it'll kind of surround the entire back and have a hole for the battery so you can still replace it. But yeah, other than that, this actually worked out pretty well. And I'm pretty happy with... Um, this is the first time I've actually designed and programmed a button matrix and so the way that I did it is oh yeah it also times out to save power if you don't touch it for about like a minute or two it'll just shut itself off to save battery but anyway uh, what I was saying was um, in order to read um, what is this 20 buttons not including the power button that's red using a, a pin change interrupt pin so in order to multiplex 20 buttons, I think I use seven wires in a matrix with diodes so that I can read um, like alternate states. So, okay, this will explain it a lot better. So every two pins can read two buttons, um, technically. Uh, the actual number of buttons per wire, so if you have I row wires and J uh, column wires, the number of buttons you can read max using my method is two times IJ. And so here you can see I wanted to read 20, so there's an array of uh, 12, if you see the intersections between the wires, there's 12 circles, and per circle there's two switches it can read. So that would be 24 uh, buttons maximum. And yep, I noted that down there. And you can see uh, basically I raise the uh, row um, drive high as an output, and then I read J, and if this button is pressed, uh, current can flow, and then I can read the state of J, so that'll tell me if this button is, is active. If um, in the second stage I actually switch I switch I to an input, and I raise J high, and then if you press the second switch, current can flow to I from J, and it can read that button. So you can see I'm kind of multiplexing it in two sets, whether I um, am driving the rows or the columns as high and reading the inputs from the opposite. So yeah, you can see that's pretty much it. Uh, this is a fairly simple way. There's more efficient ways, I believe, of, of reading lots of buttons with even fewer wires, but they get pretty complicated pretty fast. So I just wanted to do something fairly simple and this ends up working really well. This is something that I'll actually use a lot too because um, I oftentimes use like the Microsoft calculator in programmer mode and it's a pain in the butt, honestly. So I wanted just a dedicated um, calculator where I can punch in values and then get the answer instantly. And then if I don't need it anymore, just switch it off. And if I need to read it again, just switch it back on, it memorizes it. So yeah. <laughs> 
anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.